So this is the session on BuddyPress. Um, just as a disclaimer, this is going to be really, really introductory. It's going to be more um, from the point of view of a site builder, not a developer. So we're not going to talk about hooks, actions, filters, um, any of that. So we're also not going to talk about optimizing BuddyPress sites or having more than one BuddyPress installations on a multi-site configuration. Like, None of that is going to be super, super basic. Um, if you have ever used BuddyPress before in any capacity, you will likely be very bored. Um, you can leave now. I will not be offended. I promise. So, you all good? Been warned? Everyone's going to stay? Okay. So, a um, little bit about me. Uh, my name is Christina DeLude, and I work at Dartmouth College in Hanover, New Hampshire. It's about two and a half hours away. My team manages strategy and operations for the college's web presence. And my actual title is information architect slash user experience designer. But like many people who work in higher ed, I wear a lot of hats. Anyone else here work for a college or university? Yeah, you know how it is. <laughs> um, so I'm also a designer, developer, project manager, you name it. And oh yeah, that's Dartmouth, those are my dogs. <laughs> Um, we do use WordPress at Dartmouth. It's not our primary CMS, um, meaning WordPress doesn't run our homepage or our departmental websites, but it does run our news site um, and the website for our performing arts series. And we have several blogs and niche sites around campus that run WordPress as well. Also, just last month, uh, we launched a centralized WordPress service for the college, which I'm super excited about. It's been sort of a long time in the making. Um, it's a multi-site installation that allows any faculty member, student, or staff member to set up their own uh, WordPress site, manage it themselves, manage their own users. They can choose from um, a series of plugins that my team um, decided on. They can choose from a Dartmouth branded theme or um, non-Dartmouth branded themes, <coughs> somewhat random ones. Um, so it's meant to be self-service. It's sort of serving a need um, for groups that weren't um, that might team was able to help. But um, we are not going to talk about any of that today at all. Uh, instead, we are going to talk about BuddyPress, which we are actually not using um, at Dartmouth, but it's a really, really cool tool. So that's why I wanted to talk about it um, during this uh, board camp. So what is BuddyPress? Uh, who's heard of BuddyPress before? Okay. Has anyone actually used it? You're gonna be bored. <laughs> <laughs> no, a bit. Okay. Okay. Um, Make it exciting. So yeah. So um, okay. So uh, what is BuddyPress? In the broadest sense, um, it's a social networking platform. Uh, it's sort of a combination: Facebook slash Twitter slash Ning slash Meetup.com. Uh, users can set up profiles. You can friend people, join groups, <coughs> have discussion forums. Uh, and there's also varying levels of privacy. Uh, we'll go into more detail about that in a bit. Oh yeah, so to the rest of my slides. So, way to people for or way for people to with similar interests to communicate. Um, and so, buddy press sites generally tend to be centered around a particular topic or interest. For example, a college might set up buddy press as a way for alumni to connect with one another, or someone might set up a mountain biking buddy press site for members to coordinate rides, share tips swap gear, stuff like that. Uh, BuddyPress is built on WordPress. You need a regular WordPress installation first before you can install BuddyPress. Um, so Buddy, BuddyPress itself is a plugin. Some people think that BuddyPress is a separate distribution of WordPress or a different flavor of WordPress, but it's not. You have your regular old WordPress site first, and then you install BuddyPress on top of that. But it's a plugin on steroids. BuddyPress adds a lot more functionality to your WordPress site, and it also requires a special BuddyPress-specific um, theme. You can't just use any old WordPress theme for a BuddyPress site because um, it won't work. And uh, furthermore, there are plugins that are specific to BuddyPress. It can help you manage uh, your different forums and groups, and uh, it can add additional security sort of settings, <coughs> more granular security to your site. So. Now that you know what BuddyPress is, how do you go about, about building a BuddyPress site? Well, first you need a WordPress site. 
so you go to WordPress.org, you download uh, the latest version, and you install it on your web host just as if you were running a regular WordPress site. Then you uh, download the BuddyPress plugin. You can do that um, either through the WordPress dashboard plugins um, or the little plugin section on your dashboard uh, if your web host allows that, or you can download it manually from uh, WordPress.org plugins repository. And then you go to your plugins page and enable BuddyPress plugin. It is as simple as that. Uh, and so, if you know, so you do all of that, this is uh, this is what it looks like. Uh, so you can see this is your regular uh, plugins dashboard area. There's your one BuddyPress plugin. You can deactivate it if you want. Um, and so after you've installed your BuddyPress plugin, um, it'll ask you to um, to run through the installation wizard to set it up. Uh, and also you can see this. I set up a little sample site, and I like to hike, so this site is called Hiking Network. I want to build a social network of other hikers. So, it suggests that you use the installation wizard to set up your BuddyPress site. So let's go ahead and do that. There it is. Uh, so the first step is to choose the components that you want on your BuddyPress site. You can pick and choose these. Um, it's not like an all or nothing thing. It's not like if you install BuddyPress, you have to have forums and groups and private messaging and all that. You can maybe decide that you want um, forums, um, but not private messaging, or any sort of combination of those. So you can't really see that, but I'll tell you what they are. So there's extended profiles, which is basically, um, you know, when you go to, um, often on like Ning or one of those, people have profile pages and it has a little bit about them. Uh, here, in addition to just having like the person's name and a picture, you can set up additional fields. Uh, for example, you might have like an about me section. Um, on my special hiking site, I might want to know what people's level of ability is. I don't want to hike with like a bunch of noobs if I'm a more advanced person. Um, you can, so that's extended profiles. Um, account settings, uh, users can set whether or not um, they want to receive notifications and um, a couple other functions within that. And they can of course update like their username and their, their, um, their password. Um, friend connections, users can friend each other and see each other's updates in the system. Private messaging, it's like direct messaging or like private messaging on Facebook. Activity streams, it's sort of like your Facebook feed where you can see what other people are up to and what's happening in your various groups that you're involved with. Um, user groups, users can um, divide themselves into groups um, and members on a site can create new groups. Uh, the setting that you can actually make it so that only administrators can uh, create new groups or you can make it so anyone can. Uh, discussion forums, you can have either uh, forums that are specific to individual groups or forums um, that are site-wide, that are not tied to a specific group. Um, and, oh, and finally, uh, site tracking can basically make um, the BuddyPress configuration aware of your sort of larger site in general in terms of new blogs and posts. Do you know, do you know if um, users can, for the user group management, is there more granular controls like uh, to be able to separate? Um, if you, you want users, when your site is first starting, you want users to create their own groups, but you don't want them to be hidden. Oh, um, yeah, well, in groups, there's different privacy settings. Is that what you mean? Or yeah. yeah, we'll talk about that later. It's okay. um, actually pretty cool. Um, so, uh, Okay, so you choose your components that you want on your site, and then it takes you to this next page in the wizard, um, which is pages. And um, so uh, for each of the components you selected in the previous section, BuddyPress will want to create a special page or a section for it. For example, um, on a member's listing page um, and a group's listing page. So see, members page, the site activity page, groups page, special forums listing page, the register section is what um, people use to create their accounts on the site and to log in um, and uh, activate. But if an account is created, the user goes there to uh, activate their account so they can then log in um, to the site. So uh, by default, BuddyPress will want to create these pages for you and put them at 
um, those specific URLs, but if for whatever reason you want um, your members page to be um, at a different URL, or you already have a page created in the system, uh, you can select that instead. I usually just leave it at the default. Next, it'll ask you to set up your permalink structure. And to be honest, I'm not sure why it asks you to do it here within BuddyPress and not within the sort of larger permalink um, section of the WordPress site, but that's just how it works. Um, and finally, BuddyPress will ask you what you want to do about your theme. Remember earlier I said that regular WordPress themes won't work uh, with a BuddyPress installation, or at least it won't work for um, things like the groups and the forums. Um, so you basically have to accommodate that. BuddyPress comes with um, a theme built in, and it is called, appropriately enough, BuddyPress Default. And um, it's also possible to convert a regular WordPress theme to a BuddyPress theme uh, with a plugin that's called BuddyPress Template Pack. Um, and finally, you can download a ready-made special BuddyPress theme um, if you want. So you can actually, if you're in your, um, your dashboard, or the, uh, the appearance section where you can search for themes, there's actually, um, one of these checkboxes so you can look for special um, BuddyPress only themes. And of course you can also create child themes um, from BuddyPress themes. So if you don't like them there, you can create your child theme and sort of tweak the CSS accordingly and overwrite templates um, and that sort of thing. Okay, um, okay. so you go through the installation wizard Decided the components that you want for your site, picked your BuddyPress specific theme, and finally you end up with something that looks like this. This is using um, the default BuddyPress default theme. Uh, you'll notice some of your regular WordPress stuff, like you have your sample page up there um, in the menu waiver to the right. You have your widgets in the sidebar with recent posts, recent comments. Um, you got your hello world post. Um, However, you'll also notice some additional sections. For example, the activity, forums, groups, members sections. Remember earlier we created those pages within BuddyPress? That's, um, that's where they are. So, um, oh, you'll also notice you have a new admin bar at the top. You don't get that regular WordPress admin bar. You get this like special BuddyPress one. Below if you click where it says dashboard up there, you click that, then it'll sort of take you into the, um, the dashboard view and you'll see your sort of regular dashboard in our face. So let's start with groups. Or does this make sense so far? Okay. So we'll start with groups. Um, I'm going to create a group for New Hampshire hikers. So this is my groups creation page. Um, so I'm going to give my group a name, specifically New Hampshire hikers, um, and I'm going to give it a description. Um, my description is, we love hiking all over the Granite State. Um, and next, we're presented with a whole lot of privacy options. Um, so this is actually kind of hard to see. Um, um, these are all online, so you can download later if you want. But um, basically, you have for groups, you have uh, public groups, private groups, and hidden groups. Uh, public groups are listed in the groups directory and search results. Uh, their activity can be seen by anyone on the site and anyone with an account on the site can join the group. They don't need any special sort of approval or invitation. Private groups are listed in the group's directory and search results, but their activity is only visible to members of that group. And to gain access to a private group, users have to request permission um, and be approved by the group moderator. And finally, hidden groups are a lot like private groups, but they take it one step further. Private groups are not listed in the group's directory or search results, and their content is only viewable to group members, and they have to be invited to join um, by an existing group member. BuddyPress also gives you options for who's allowed to invite other users. Um, for example, can anyone who's a member of a group invite others, or is it only the group admins and moderators, or group admins only? Um, and finally, you have the option way at the top where it says enable discussion forum. If you want this group to have its own special um, discussion forum, you can do that there. So I'm going to go ahead and make my, my New Hampshire group public so anyone can browse um, our activity and join. You can give your group an avatar uh, if you like. 
This shows up on the group's listing page and also in search results. Uh, okay. you can browse the computer, find your appropriate image, upload it, and then I'll resize it accordingly. And once my group is created, it um, asks me if I want to invite any friends to join my group. Um, and so I have one friend on this site named John Hiker, so I could invite him to join my special New Hampshire hiking group um, if I wanted to. And it'll only ask you um, for uh, people you're friends with. If there's like 100 people on the site, but you're only friends with like five of them, then it'll only list those five people to invite, not everyone on the site. So um, now that my group is created, it's now listed in the groups directory. So see, right now there's two groups on this site. There's my New Hampshire hikers group, and there's a group of uh, 65 plus hikers. Um, so someone could, in theory, be a member of both groups. They could be in the 65 plus group, um, and also New Hampshire hikers group. And as you can see here, um, over here it shows, um, this is a public group, it's a private group. It shows how many people are in the group. So you can sort of see at a glance. Uh, so uh, that's my group. And once our group is flushed out with some activity, then it starts to look like this. And so this is showing uh, frequent or recent forum topics, uh, updates if I wanted to post to the group. Um, the very beginning it shows when the group is created, uh, it's sort of time and date stamps and everything. Um, so right now, this is not a terribly interesting group. It's just me and my fictitious friend, John Hiker, bantering back and forth. Um, but in theory, if there are more people in this group, then you could have more of a discussion. Um, so now let's talk about forums. Does that make sense with groups? Anyone have any questions about groups? No? Okay. Let's, um, so let's move on to forums. So forums, I'm not gonna lie, forums are actually really um, pretty confusing. This is actually what I have some, a, a little bit of trouble with um, sometimes in BuddyPress because uh, you're allowed to create, remember I mentioned you could create um, group-specific forums but then also site-wide forums. The group-specific forums are uh, much easier. Um, there's a forums package that uh, comes bundled with, um, with BuddyPress. It's really, really similar to this other um, project called BBPress, like for bulletin board, but it's not, it's not an exact um, version of BBPress. There's some things that are a little bit different, so you can't use um, uh, like plugins for BBPress. That doesn't really work in the, the groups um, forums in BuddyPress. But to make things more confusing, if you want a site-wide forum, um, then you basically download regular BBPress, and then you can have um, your special like BBPress um, forums and things. Um, so, okay, so again, I mentioned you can set up forums for individual groups or site-wide. Um, you actually also can have um, group-specific forums and site-wide forums on the same site, but that's like really, really not recommended um, just from a user experience point of view because it's just it's a bit of a mess. Um, so you can see this, this is my forums page. You can see we have two topics. We have volunteers needed for trail work and potluck next month. And so for my first um, topic, it's only me I posted and that's it. But for, <coughs> excuse me, for potluck next month, my pal John Hiker went and uh, he replied. So it'll show you the most recent person who replied and also um, the most recent, uh, or how, uh, how recently the last reply was. Uh, you can also tag forum posts um, and there's, there's a widget that you can, um, you can put in the sidebar if you want of sort of all the, um, the forum uh, tags. So, um, so that, oh, so okay, yeah. So this is um, when I'm looking at um, my group, uh, I'm within my group and I'm looking at the forums page within that, groups, within that group, that um, is what I see. But then also remember how there was um, a forums tab at the top there. It's one of the major top level sections. If I go there, it'll show me the most recent posts of all the forums that I'm a member of. So um, I'm, a member of the New Hampshire hikers group, but I'm also a member of the ladies hiking group. And so uh, 
you see all of the, um, the posts kind of aggregated together there. And it'll only show you uh, posts of forums that you're allowed to see. If it's a group that's a private group and I'm not a member of that group, then, um, then it doesn't show up there. Okay, is that forum? Yeah. Can you, can you sign in as a user with uh, Facebook or Twitter and ID and anybody press? Um, out of the box, no, but there are plugins that stuff integrated here. Um, I'm inclined to say probably. Um, I don't know off the top of my head if there is like a definite plugin that does that, but I'm pretty sure there is some kind of integration. Um, who else had a question about forums? Yeah, in the back. Can I ask you more of a general question? Sure. Um, do you recommend if somebody's trying to buddy press new that they put it on a clean installation of WordPress so that you can keep your existing site intact? And if you do recommend that it gets its own dedicated uh, installation, could you do it using multi-site and just make a separate site just for buddy press? Um, I think if you're getting started, you should definitely do your own clean WordPress install just so you can tell like, what is a buddy press specific thing as opposed to other parts of this site. Um, you can use buddy press on multi-site. By default, it'll put like all the buddy press stuff on like the main site on the multi-site installation, but there is a way where you can designate one of your um, your like subsites on the network to be um, to be the BuddyPress site. Um, but you need to go into um, it's either like the WP config. There's also another config that's within BuddyPress, and there's you need to edit one or both of those, and I sort of forget which. Um, what you can't do is have, um, if you have a multi-site installation, well, what you can do is you can have BuddyPress show up on all of the sites on your network, but it would be the same BuddyPress installation. Um, so it wouldn't be group specific to individual sites. It would just be like, here's all the groups, and they're visible on all the sites, which is kind of pointless and not really recommended. Um, you, there is a plugin that I've not used that supposedly makes it able to divide up um, or have separate BuddyPress installations for different uh, sites on a multi-site, but um, but I haven't used it, so I, I can't vouch for it. But that's also it's it gets into the realm of like finagling, and it's not overly elegant at this point. Uh, yeah. So, anyone else have questions on forums? Okay, um, so that's forms. So something else that is actually really cool about BuddyPress um, is extended profile fields. Um, and this comes out of the box. There isn't like a separate plugin that makes it so that you can do this, um, which I think is really cool. So by default, you get a name field right up there. Um, but you can also add your own additional fields. Um, for example, uh, I want to ask people to um, share a little bit about their hiking experience. So I made a field, or I am, um, oh, we can't really actually tell, there's a text field there, um, which um, is for favorite hiking spot. People can fill in, like, where do they like to hike? Um, and finally, hiking ability. Um, I also can't really tell, it's a drop-down menu. They have, like, different levels of, um, of hiking. There's, like, the I barely get off the couch level all the way up to, like, I'm a Sherpa. Um, and so, uh, so when you can oh and for these separate profile fields you can um, you can specify what kind of like input uh, mechanism you want for it whether it's like a text field or radio buttons or a drop down <laughs> menu um, it's actually pretty cool so um, with my additional fields that I added if I look at my profile on the site now this um, this is what it looks like you know for my favorite hiking spot I said White Mountains in New Hampshire and for my hiking ability I said I hike mountains. And it's cool because um, the uh, for depending on what kind of input mechanism you use, um, input fields, it um, will link it up. So if I chose the I Hike Mountains um, thing and I click on that, it'll pull up everyone else's profiles who also filled um, out that. So, um, so that's pretty cool. So that's extended profile fields. Anyone have any questions about that? Yeah. So you could use this to make like an expert locator? Uh, you could do that, yeah. That's a good idea. So, are those searchable? 
Um, I believe so. No, I actually haven't really ever tried. We can, um, I have my little like sample thing that I set up here on my NAMP, and so we can try that later if there's time. Um, so, the other question? Yeah. Um, on the extended profiles, um, mm -hmm. do you know of any decent plugins to uh, automatically fill in like a, a Twitter account mm -hmm. or a Google Plus one? That I don't know off the top of my head. I mean, at the very I've least... I've had a look at a few, but they, look, they, they, they look quite dated. Yeah, so. I guess at the very least you could have separate um, text fields for like Twitter username, Facebook username, um, for that. Yeah, I put the Twitter oh, one, I just put a standard text field in, mm -hmm. but then you have to put in the full twitch.com slash. It works, yeah. but it works. So. Yeah. Okay, um, so any other questions so far? Okay. Sorry, one more. Um, have you used BuddyPress um, within like a, a group? Um, so, like, you know, for the university or something, mm -hmm. how do you? Rather than having to get everybody to fill in an additional profile when they've got, you know, like a LinkedIn profile or something, yeah. how, is there any way to kind of automatically do that for them? Yeah, uh, sort of. Um, we actually, so we don't use BuddyPress at Dartmouth at the moment. We've kind of thought about um, possibilities of using it, but so far we haven't found like a perfect use case for it yet. So that's sort of the disclaimer. with. Um, with BuddyPress, there are plugins I know that will link it up to your like LinkedIn profile and Facebook profile, so you can authenticate through that. But as far as like um, like oftentimes universities or organizations have like the LDAP or like the Active Directory thing, like the central authentication system, um, WordPress has the um, like WordPress itself has the plugins for that. Um, we use one at Dartmouth for that, and so you can like at the WordPress level you can authenticate people in, not so much at like the BuddyPress. Yeah, no, it, uh, not the authentication, oh. but to actually populate the profile. Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, I don't know any plugins off the top of my head that do that. Sorry. Um, you can write one. Yeah. <laughs> There's a job for you. Um, okay, so my little like hiking network website, um, that is fake, so it's a fictitious example, but there are real live sites out there that use BuddyPress. Um, for example, the City University of New York. Oh, and also a disclaimer, these next examples that uh, I'm going to show, I have nothing to do with any of these. These were just ones I found just Googling around, so I have no idea how these work on the back end. But, um, but this is the City University of New York, um, and this is their Academic Commons website. And what this is doing is facilitating uh, the building of community through the use of technology um, in teaching and learning. So you can see people have, um, there's the members listing there, and those are their groups on uh, blog posts that are sort of connected to uh, people's profiles in, uh, in the forums. So there's that. This is a website called Tasty Kitchen. Um, and what this is, is a recipe sharing website. People set up profiles uh, where they share recipes and they blog about different food related things and, uh, and they rate recipes. So there's that. And finally, this is the main learning network. Is Jay Collier here? Jay? No, Jay. Well, Jay, um, he works on this site. And uh, what this is, is um, a community for educators in Maine. Um, and they can post professional development um, events. They can trade syllabi amongst themselves, um, and teaching materials, uh, that sort of thing. So, um, that, yeah. Sorry, what was the picture? Oh, the picture was called. Tasty Kitchen, which is kind of a funny name. Um, so uh, that is all I have. Uh, let me check the time. Oh, okay. Um, so, oh yeah, so I forgot to mention that um, BuddyPress.org was a ton of really, really good resources there. BuddyPress has its own codex, um, and that's actually where you can find uh, plugins and themes really easily uh, to use with BuddyPress, and also more advanced stuff, like if you want to get into, like, the hooks and that kind of thing. There's also template um, template functions that are specific to BuddyPress that are useful, so that's all in the codex too. Um, and actually, I'm going to pull that up here in a bit and I'll show you guys. And finally, um, I posted this already to my SlideShare account, so it's just slideshare.net uh, slash cd. So I can show you the, um, this is the BuddyPress um, 
Searching for groups um, or uh, searching members for uh, their little profile fields. So I'm going to hike or I'm going to um, type mountains and um, yeah, because I think it pulled up the only thing to the mountains I think was in my little uh, uh, my, um, oops, my, uh, okay, my profile field here. So yeah, so <coughs> just, like, um, search the that um, oh people can set their own um, account settings you can choose your notifications you get email notifications um, you can turn them off if you want um, so if someone at replies you can like at reply people like on Twitter um, or people reply to comments or post new uh, things or send you a friendship request you can do that also you get a little notification thing up here if you do have it's kind of like Facebook where if you have a new um, a new buddy hit shows up here, and you can approve the buddy or not. Um, anything specifically you guys want to see? Yeah, you? I've got a curious question. Sure. Have you had an opportunity to set this up with actual users? Because no, one just of my me. Men, I, I thought, I thought you did a great job showing, uh, showing it and its capabilities. Um, I wonder if anyone in the room has, and one of my concerns would be all of the automated scripting. How good are the BuddyPress plugins to preventing um, people just running away and you know, so I, uh, sort of <laughs> monitoring type stuff? I can be the bad example. So I set one up on a test account purely to play around with it and then forgot about it for six months. <laughs> <laughs> Spam and tumbleweeds like you would not believe. User accounts great. Now, I did, yeah, when I was I did not do a good site. job securing it, so it entirely user error on my fault. I didn't you know, sure. set things up. But do be careful if you don't have it. You know, if you don't spend time preventing it, that behavior will happen. Yeah, there actually are plugins. I know there are plugins right. um, that and prevent. Right. That's what I'm saying. It's my fault, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, but do we have no users here in Boston that actually have tried this? Interesting. I'm I'm working on one. Um, basically, um, I do IT support for a marketing agency. Um, so a lot of the WordPress sites I've been involved with are for specific disciplines. Mm -hmm. And I've been looking at BuddyPress to, and they, they um, search and analytics team specifically want a more social <coughs> WordPress site. And they've already got the basic WordPress site. But I've been looking at this to, um, to basically provide things like extended profiles and forums, uh, which are two of the big things that they want. Um, personally, I mean, I've been looking at it for the last couple of weeks. One of the things that I found is on the um, on the plugins side of things on the on the BuddyPress site itself it seems a very much mixed bag, and you do have to be careful between WordPress plugins and BuddyPress plugins and whether there's possible issues with them. Uh, it does seem quite useful. Uh, the other thing, as um, as you said, was um, you can't just use a, a regular uh, WordPress theme. You have to have a, uh, a specific body press team, so that's something else that we're going to have to look at. Um, but um, well, yeah, you know, I, I, I'm purposefully going to set it up, and I got in a similar way a test site. We'll talk to them about it and say these are the functionalities we can bring in. Um, and on the components side, the other thing that I've heard suggested a lot is 
don't give them everything. Um, give them a couple of things first. So for my part, it'd be extended profiles and maybe start them down the forums room. Um, but for everything else, you know, get them used to that first and then say, okay, now let's give you it. But the only thing that um, I consider turning off is the private messaging, just because it's not necessarily that I don't think people wouldn't use it, it's just they've got internal email and instant messenger and things like that. And if they've got groups and things, it's like that idea is it's supposed to be social, so let's not hide stuff away. If people want to talk um, about a specific topic, then either pick up the phone, walk across the office, or send them an email if they're in a different office. So, but this is basically that the idea is that the site is basically for um, strategy and analytics or a discipline group, but they might actually be, you know, in seven different offices. So it's kind of interesting, but um, one of the things I'm looking at as well is um, Active Directory integration as well. So the only problem is then in a similar way to WordPress, you've still got the um, reset password option. So I'm trying to find a way to, to remove that as well. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. It hasn't gone live yet, but it just seemed like a, a, a natural kind of possible solution based on their requirements. So. Yeah. Okay, another question. Uh, just to answer that question, um, I work for a healthcare consulting firm and I'm part of the web team. We actually had a client that asked for something like that. Um, the reason why we didn't roll this out, I mean, we didn't use BuddyPress, mm -hmm. is because there are so many other other stuff that are out there that already it's already built in. Like they ended up using a program called GroupSite. Mm -hmm. So if you go to GroupSite.com, I mean, it's essentially this, but you don't have to build anything. You just have everything ready. Sure. And another reason why we didn't go, I mean with this is um, if you think about it, you can technically build all that on a regular WordPress website. Sure. Like for example, forms, there's all those plugins, um, the groups and stuff. I mean, you can kind of modify the core files with the user roles and stuff. So I think this kind of serves as like an intranet, like sort of mm -hmm. how you explained it within a company. But I feel like if you try to roll this out as an intranet, people aren't gonna come in. People are gonna like walk to each other's office and most offices they already have like an instant messaging mm -hmm. or, or an email system. Yeah, it's, it's, so. all, it's all down to use case. So. Exactly. Yeah. So John James Jacoby, who's the lead developer at BuddyPress, is Providence-based and has often at either the Boston Meetup or the Providence Meetup. He couldn't be here this weekend because he's actually at Word Camp Columbus, which was also this weekend, but uh, he's Isn't often in the local area. What's his name? Those groups. John James Jacoby, Twitter at JJJ or a J-Trip, he's commonly called. Uh, but his Twitter handle is at JJJ and John James Yeah, that's right here. If you go to that Twitter handle, it'll say he's moved to JJJ. Okay, anyone have any other questions? Yeah. I'm just curious if you know of anyone who set this up on a multi-site. Oh, um, yeah, actually, the gentleman behind you actually asked that um, before. Basically, what, um, the way it works is um, you can set it up on a multi-site, and by default, um, the, all the BuddyPress stuff will be at like the home site for the multi-site installation. Um, and you can make it be on one of the sub-sites, but you have to um, you have to change something in WP config. Um, oh, it's either WP config or there's like a config that's specific to BuddyPress. I sort of forget which one it is, but it's one of those. Um, what you can't do, or yeah, what you can't do is have separate buddy presses for each site on your multi-site installation. You can do it with, um, there's a plugin that purports to do this, but I haven't used it, so I don't, I don't know how good it is, or, yeah. You mentioned you're concerned about getting uh, <coughs> spam user accounts yeah. uh, registered. If I wanted to use this in a school setting, I assume it's the way they can set it, set it up so that the only way to get users is for an administrator or something to add a user, right? Yeah, you could do that. Um, so yeah, with the multi-site you can, but only um, for the uh, for body price you can, but mostly just on one site on the multi-site without various enabling. And probably just put it on a separate installation. 
Or you can put them in a separate installation.